In April 2003, scientists from Geoscience Australia were carrying out a seabed mapping program in the southern Gulf of Carpentaria. They were equipped with a state-of-the-art multi-beam sonar seabed mapping system capable of collecting 505 depth measurements per second and creating a three-dimensional image of the seabed. Multi-beam sonar system is a relatively new technology that's only recently become available to marine geoscientists to use. It's a significant advancement over what we used to use before, which was a single beam system. Whereas the multi-beam system, as the name suggests, has multiple beams that sends uh, sound waves into the ocean and uh, reflects them off the seabed. And what that does is it provides you with 100% coverage of the seabed and builds up a, a nice picture of the, of the water depths. I guess it's like having uh, satellite imagery or aerial photography um, for, the, for the ocean. During the survey, the team decided to use the multi-beam sonar to investigate three curious mounds that were marked on nautical charts. They were amazed by what the sonar revealed. As the uh, data came on board, we began to realize gradually that this was a, a reef system. And uh, it uh, was quite curious because no one had actually uh, documented uh, uh, reefs in the Gulf of Carpentaria before. And then as we began to look more closely at the nautical chart, we found that there were literally dozens of uh, these curious looking mounds uh, scattered across the southern Gulf of Carpentaria. And uh, as uh, we collected more and more multi-beam data, we, could, we began to realize that, that many, if not all, of these submerged uh, mound features were indeed uh, coral reefs that had uh, grown at some point in the past. The Gulf of Carpentaria typically conjures up images of prawn fishermen, bauxite mines and wild open country, rather than of shoals of tropical fish and coral reefs. Yet, the 2003 survey revealed the existence of previously unknown coral reefs. Underwater video showed that the reefs were alive with luxuriant coral growth occurring in many locations, but with their upper surfaces submerged 25 to 30 metres below the sea surface, making them invisible to satellites or airplanes. Questions needed to be answered about the Carpentaria reefs. Were there more submerged reefs like these in the Gulf? From a geological viewpoint, the depths of the reef surfaces also posed a puzzle. Are their depths related to a previous sea level? And how can we be sure that the platform is not just a bulge of rock with a thin layer of coral growing on top? The answers would be found in samples collected using an underwater rock drill. Geoscience Australia commenced an ambitious program to rebuild an underwater drill that had not been used for 20 years. On March the 23rd, 2005, a second expedition equipped with the drill sailed from the port of Weeper and headed into the southern Gulf of Carpentaria. A 2.3 metre long core of reef limestone was collected and confirmed that the reef structure is comprised of coral and associated reef material. Over the next three weeks, the drill was successfully used 46 times in water depths of up to 50 metres. As a result of its work, Geoscience Australia's second expedition to the Gulf of Carpentaria confirmed the existence of a new reef province in Australia's north, extending over 400 kilometres along the southern Gulf and comprising as many as 50 separate reefs. And the reefs are still alive. Coral, fish, sponges, starfish and soft corals live in abundant profusion over these reefs. We were actually able to look at the reefs with um, underwater video footage as well as taking samples with a benthic sled and this brings back a whole wealth of new information about the types of organisms that live on the sea floor. Now around the reef sites we took about 11 different benthic sled transects, um, so both on the reef and at sites around the reef and we had a biologist on board and, and they found 175 different species just from those 11 sites on and around the, the reef, so it was staggering. And many of those species hadn't actually been identified formally by scientists before, so it's a very unique data set providing new information about the species that live in the Gulf of Carpentaria. 
The expedition brought back 39 metres of rock core to the Geoscience Australia headquarters in Canberra. The core samples were logged and photographed before small sections were cut using a rock saw for later study under the microscope. To find out when the corals grew, a technique called uranium thorium dating was carried out on selected specimens at the Australian National University. The dating revealed some surprising results. Corals had moved in and reef growth had commenced by as early as 11,000 years ago when the Gulf of Carpentaria was connected to the Arafura Sea by a broad but shallow channel and the Torres Strait was closed. Dating demonstrated that reef growth rates were around a healthy one metre of coral limestone per thousand years. Then, catastrophe. Around 7,000 years ago, reef growth ceased at almost all locations. Something had changed in the Gulf environment that stopped the reefs dead in their tracks. But what? Even at their peak, the Carpentaria reefs were not fast builders. Their vertical growth rates were never more than around one metre per thousand years, whereas reefs in the Great Barrier Reef have been able to keep pace with rates of sea level rise of around 20 metres per thousand years and are at present established at or just below sea level. So the simplest explanation may be that the Carpentaria reefs could not grow fast enough to keep up with rising sea levels. The lessons learned from the discovery of the Carpentaria reefs have broad implications for coral reef science and environmental management. Submerged reefs could be widespread and common in the tropical waters of Northern Australia. No doubt more will be found now that the necessary technology exists. Such reefs take longer to recover from human disturbances than sea surface reefs and this has implications for their protection and management now and into the future. And since coral reefs are among the most species-rich ecosystems on Earth, the Carpentaria reefs and their abundant biodiversity need to be included in environmental plans for the region and protected for future generations.